Hello GDQ, my name is Canon Sense, and I would like to submit Toki, the remaster for SGDQ 2021. So as you can see, uh, Toki here basically answers the question, what if Contra, but Monkey? Um, so you know, this is a, a, a game from the 80s, and actually, don't mind that death, let's start. go ahead and start over. Time starts whenever we start a new game. It'll be, uh, let's let go. So, as I was saying, Toki basically answers the question, what if Contra, uh, but Monkey? Because, yes, of course, uh, Toki, as you can see, can uh, shoot a variety of different projectiles out of his mouth. Um, right now we have the Helix shot. Over the course of the game, we get, you know, a trusty flamethrower. Um, we get uh, spread, very classic, again, like Contra. And even uh, this what we have here, you know, this sort of like a helix shot, I guess, as I've taken to calling it. Um, he also gets a couple of different upgrades, as you can see. He's got that little football helmet. He also gets um, some uh, tennis shoes um, that uh, help him jump higher. The football helmet kind of works as uh, Mario's, uh, you know, superstar. It gives a little bit of invincibility, at least from the front <laughs> from the front and top um you know if he gets tagged from the back for instance um that's you know he'll still get hit um but yeah and, and again kind of uh you know going off of 80s logic um 80s arcade game logic where not only is shooting a, vi a viable way of taking out enemies but so is jumping on them which is a thing that we'll be doing every so often so this is our first boss, it's Bola Barag, say hi, say bye. Um, a lot of the bosses are really, at least the first, the first few, the first two I guess I should say, are really all about mashing. Um, so you know, obviously just like Mega Man, the faster you can shoot, um, the faster you can, you know, the faster you can mash that button, the faster you can shoot out your projectiles. Um, so we're going to do a little bit of a skip here, and we can jump on this little cloud, yep, to bypass having to climb and take the long way, basically. Speed running, am I right? Uh, so yeah, once we're underwater, we have our trusty helmet again, and try to avoid attacks from underneath and behind. Um, we want, yep, there we go, we can take out the cupper. Hopefully, yep. And we get our spread again, which should make work, uh, ma should make quick work of our next little uh, uh, mini boss here. This is Neptuna, and it's kind of a pushover. Um, at least with spread. <laughs> it really makes it very, uh, a lot easier, in other words. Uh, gonna make our way up. So yeah, Nep Neptuna is probably my uh, one of my two favorite boss names. I think the other one is this one that we're about to see, Rambacha, which is basically the Michelin Man as a floating cyclops. So yeah, uh, should be a two cycle, he disappears, and then uh, he just reappears in a different section, and boom. Um, gonna d say Rambaybay -bye to Rambacha. <laughs> Stage two clear. Just time to do the Toki dance. Uh, on to stage three. So we are following traditional, you know, sort of video game tropes. We have a fire level, and uh, we, you know, we did have a jungle. Uh, actually, we have, I guess, two technically. Um, no desert though, surprisingly. That's uh, maybe an oversight on the developer's part. But here we want to use our helmet to take out. Our flying enemy quickly. Make ooh, be very careful around these spikes. I've definitely died here, killed many a run. Um, but yeah, thankfully we can barrel our way through them because we have invincibility. Get another helmet uh, power up. Make quick work of these baddies. And yeah, take out the that's a that's a webstamite or the the spiders. Um, do a little bit of platforming here. So yeah, look, we don't even need to wait for we don't need to wait for no platform. So this next enemy, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. So yeah, that that enemy has 
I'm pretty sure RNG health. I've seen I've had to take out anywhere from like five to nine hits to kill it. There is a trick which I did not do there, um, where if you you shoot, I th I'm guessing right at at the exact frame that the enemy appears, it will stay frozen and it won't bounce around the screen and it'll just make it much easier um, to take care of. So of course. Uh, Toki is Monkey. I know he's an ape. Um, but yeah, this is actually the first time that we actually get to see him uh, swing, you know, which uh, this stage three introduces this swinging mechanic. Pretty simple, you know. Grab onto the thing, jump when you clear the gap, right? We've all seen it. Oh yeah, the, here's another actually power up. Uh, we've all seen this in video games, right? Where it's the kind of, uh, you know, where you you have a charged shot where if you don't fire it shoots more powerfully uh initially and then of course the more you mash you shoot less powerful shots um but yeah this is the eldritch horror known as mogulvar just as one of my viewers put it um dancing entrails in a sack or something um yeah it just goes back and forth burps at you he can block some of your shots so uh, yeah, trying to make quick work of him. So, as I mentioned about video game tropes, um, well, we go from fire to ice. And as you can see, the enemies are actually prepared for the ice here. Toki, however, is not. But yeah, these uh, Geisher Gams, they're called, um, have earmuffs, and even the Urbamos uh, are wearing little scarves. Watch out for the ghost. Um... I only know uh, that's a pangafin, uh, that little pink penguin wearing a bow tie. Uh, I only know some of these names because, so the uh, uh, this game, this remake, uh, remaster, I should say, um, actually does have a uh, an enemy gallery, but it's only like five enemies, and so I actually watched a uh, a long play of the original arcade game, you know, on YouTube. And uh, in the closing credits, it actually does give you all of the enemy names, so I'm still trying to learn them all, <laughs> so I can be more specific. Um, but, uh, yeah, like, uh, fun fact, the Geisher Gams, those are those bouncing yellow apes. Fun fact, in this version, they are propelled by farting, which I learned from checking out the enemy gallery in this game. So these giant mollusks, uh, they're called Vipus. Uh, Vipus? Vipus? I don't know. And then we're coming up next to the fourth boss. This is Zorzamoth, um, who, again, thanks to a viewer in my chat, we have determined that Zorzamoth is a mammoth and not a mastodon. Apparently, mammoths have, as you can see here, the curved tusks. And um, mastodons have, I guess, straighter tusks. So, there's fun fact, fun fact for you. Another two fun facts for this stage. Woo! Toki dance. Uh, we go back to the uh, Zi jungle, um, and uh, this is where things start to get a little tricky sometimes. I mean, if they haven't already. Uh, I'm gonna attempt a sort of a YOLO strat here to clear this gap. So there are three ways that I can tell, and I missed it, to clear that gap. The first is to YOLO it, as you can see I'm kind of doing, where you jump across and you try and jump over and around on top of the plant so you can just basically keep going on your merry way. The second, the the, the safest way, there we go, yeah, see, there you can, you can see how I got it that time. The, the safest way is to just wait for it to appear and pelt it with fireballs from the other side of the gap. That's obviously the slowest. And then there's a, a, a third way um, where uh, you can uh, time it so that the little balls that it shoots at you, um, you can jump on them to then jump across naturally. Um, I don't like that strat. <laughs> try to go. I'm pretty sure that the, the quote-unquote YOLO one is the fastest. Um, so, uh, making our way up, we're, we're, we're reaching the fifth boss. This is going to be Bashtar, 
who is a uh, 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 Bashtar is basically uh, a disembodied collection of hands, feet, and heart. <laughs> um, and actually, it's Bashtar who, uh, I mean, the sorcerer, Vuki Medlo, summons Bashtar to kidnap Miho. Um, not the end of the game, though, but yeah, you'll see. Um, do -do -do. Uh, the music in this game is in the remaster is uh, is pretty good. Um, there is actually an option where you can uh, switch to the retro, like the actual arcade music, um, which is you know quite a uh, nostalgia trip. Anyway, here's Bashtar. Uh, he likes to protect his heart, as I think most of us do. Now let's see if we can mash this out. Boom. Stage five clear. So we are now finally on to the last stage, stage six. This is the Golden Palace, and this is where I guess Vuki Medlo awaits us. <laughs> Vuki Medlo is also a great name for a sorcerer. Um, feel like uh, yeah it's 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 fun to say of course I kind of hate him more because he has killed I've died I've lost many a run here um, these are Belzadors we've seen them before they're a super annoying enemy because they're kind of RNG they just sort of bounce around the whole stage uh, these little armored knights are called oh, and I die here Armorel Kemen and yep yeah, oh yep yeah, that's a Geisha Gam Look, you might you might not be able to tell, but if you look closely, you can see that they do propel themselves by farting. Um, but yeah, these guys just sort of bounce around. There's two of them. You know, while you're shooting one, uh, one can sneak up behind you and poke you. You know, and uh, anyway, so yeah, jump, shoot, do what you got to do. It's an '80s arcade game. Um, deaths. I haven't brought this up yet because of course I died, and then of course I lose like three lives right in quick succession but um deaths in toki cost you about five seconds for the death itself and then of course more depending on where you get placed in the checkpoint they're fairly generous all things considered uh there are actually quite a few checkpoints over the course of the game in each stage um but you know it's yeah so, some are some are better than others of course the best is to just be good and not die have a little bit of an auto scroller here uh, as we go jump across. Oh, and oh boy, <laughs> off to a great start. Um, but this is the last uh, 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 cart section. Get the last helmet because it's going to help us. Ooh, there's a little bit of momentum, and so jumping onto these these carts is a little tricky because there's a little bit of momentum when you jump from one to the other. So, home stretch. Those flying birds that drop power-ups, by the way, are called Thorpedos. And then finally, Vuki Medlo, you and me. <laughs> mano a mano. Uh, this isn't even my final form. So yeah, he turns into a horrible monster, as you might expect. And then, just like Bashtar, you gotta you gotta take out gotta take out his heart. So time. Uh, ends with the last hit on Vuki Medlo, uh, which hopefully we'll be able to get here sooner rather than later. This is actually a pretty decent pattern because uh, he. Oh, one last. There it is. Time. So yeah, we got 1326, which is okay. Um, right now, the world record. I'm about a minute behind world record, um, which is 12. 1227, I believe. Um, but I'm grinding it out. I'm trying. And then, uh, yeah, now, of course, we get to see what uh, we rescue Miho. And we get our wonderful human form again. <laughs> so there we have it. Uh, as we run through a field, collect flowers. Um... There's Miho, and there's Toki, embracing once again. So, there you have it. 
Your quest is over. The evil forces have been defeated. Toki, the warrior, joyfully embraces his lover, Miho. Your quest has come to an end for now. But can you repeat your glory? Well, thanks for watching. Um, as I said, my name is Canon Sense, and uh, hope to see Toki at uh, SGDQ. Thanks for watching.